This is not Crimson Guitars. This is not even my home studio. This is, this is my vintage tool shop, which doesn't feature on the channel very often because that would be too self-serving. But I've just bought a humongous load of various fantastically interesting tools, and I thought you'd like to see me going through a few bits and pieces. Burn it. Ah, <laughs> yay! Uh, the shop is open, we're all social distancing and wearing masks 99% of the time. So it's cool. There's gotta be something else. What do I need to talk about? Sale? Sale, Boxing Day sale. 10% off everything at VintageToolShop.com. 15%. Yeah. 15% off, That's, this is from Safi, the uh, fantastic manager in chief of this beautiful establishment. Come on then, let's look at some cool stuff. Oh yes. The shop was tidy and clean and organized and wonderful. And then we arrived. What's in, ooh. Oh, now this is my box. Okay. Okay, I think this is the one I've been looking forward to. Oh, look at that. So this is an advert for George Buck planes, which were made, which were made for Buck by Norris uh, almost entirely. That's just perfect to go in that. We've got a, there's some Norris as a, an A4. Wow, we're a bit short of Norris, aren't we? An old Preston. Yeah, I'll have to bring, I've got a few more at home waiting, waiting proper restoration. That is, that is incredible. That can just go there for now. Well, I said we needed more Norrises. So this is a post-war Norris A5. Short blade, i.e. very well used. But, yeah, Robert Sort post-war. Post-war. Still, there's enough in there. So that just needs to go. So we've got some light surface rust. This will go through the workshops. We'll make sure it's working absolutely perfectly. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a 250 odd quid plane thereabouts. Maybe a little bit less because it doesn't have too long of a blade. But the reason why people love Norris's so much, they are all impeccably made, even the, even the more recent ones. By more recent, I'm talking 1930s. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. So uh, for a long time, when we were trying to say, hey, buy British, all tools that were imported had to be marked foreign on them. And a lot of them are German. See the Cupid's bow on the uh, cap iron there? It's the unnecessary and beautiful things that just make all of this worthwhile. Oh, hey, sweetheart. I've seen that. You saw what? <laughs> what did you see? It's just a beautiful handle. So this is an old K's patent oh, with nice. the pie crust there. The, the, if you see the ones with the pie crust on the, along the bottom, yeah, that's where you want to be. Small, yet perfectly formed. I'm not sure what it is, but this, that makes me inordinately happy. Just delicious. So old tool auction catalogs are where, where I find what I need to own next. Oh, look at this. Oh, Safi. Thermofix paper binder. So that goes on the edge of your bench and you run the paper through underneath the knurled wheel there and it crimps it together. I can't believe nobody wanted it.
so we ship out 20 to 30, 40 packages a day, really, of vintage tools around the world. And <laughs> so this here, Safi, it's missing, I think it's missing bits, yeah. but this is a toolmaker's clamp. And if you look carefully, you'll see a manufacturer's name. Norris. Indeed. Jeez. And uh, yeah, I just had to, I just had to have it. <laughs> So, yeah, Norris, London. And let's see what else we've got in here. So these, these are some leather workers' awls. Everybody handmade their handles. Isn't that just... Just gorgeous. There are a couple of saws I'm particularly looking forward to. This is not one of them, although that's beautiful. So if you're looking at old saws and you see, there's often a sort of a, a rhino's horn kind of thing there, that's not as pronounced, but this, when they've carved it in there, that's called a lamb's tongue and that just denotes quality. Um, having the split nuts as well is, a, is another sign of a good saw. And this is just particularly nice. The one thing to look for as well is uh, that there's no or very little friction when you run your fingers down the blade itself. Um, that this is a sublime saw. It is absolutely incredible. <laughs> So this is an I Hill late howl of London. Open handle, split nut. Um, not quite dovetail saw, it's not the finest teeth. That there is pushing on a couple of hundred quids worth of vintage saw there. Again, we've got the horn, we've got the lamb's tongue. Although the lamb's tongue on this isn't as, as beautiful as that on on the Tizak. So if you look down the down the length of the blade. It's not ideal. There you go. In a recent video, uh, it was the repair for when I was repairing that sort of Viola de Gamba guitar cross thing. I had uh, Miller's Falls tool handle that I used in the video. This is the next version of that tool handle. Same one, patented in 1890 something, or 1860 something. The only difference is, this one is a multi-tool. So we've got a gouge, a chisel, and three different size screwdrivers. And they all live inside this gorgeous little Brazilian rosette handle. Again, it's been broken and repaired, as is often the case. So a lot of what comes in here is the general rusty... Um, so we've got various saw sets and just random catches and metal and bits, but there's a lot of special stuff as well. Uh, and it's not only vintage. When I arrived this morning, this, this shop was pristinely beautiful and gorgeous, uh, by dint of the fact that I haven't been here for about a week. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a problem. But, um, well, that's a pile of turning tools among other things, <laughs> mostly Sorby. There's Starrett, Sorby, Plains, the number seven just sitting in there waiting to be restored. 
Um, and there's still more to go through. I haven't even gone through the old molding planes yet. I hope you enjoyed this. This is, for me, a treasure hunt. We, we saw most of these in photographs before we bought them. And we buy from around the country, if not the world, actually. But it's still a case of, what's that, and ooh, etc. I mean, there was, among this group of tools, an entire watchmaker's lathe that we didn't realize was a watchmaker's lathe until we found all of the disparate parts and put it together. Uh, anyway, listen, um, if you want to see more videos like this, uh, I'm sure it can be organized. It's a bit of an issue with the masks and, and social distancing and all that, but uh, as life returns to normal, I would be, uh, yeah, I'd be up for that. Uh, potentially on the Crimson Guitars Extras channel, we'll see. Uh, there is um, a sale going on now at vintagetoolshop.com. Uh, Boxing Day sales, so I suppose, what, the first two weeks of January? This wasn't the plan, I just knew this stuff was coming and thought we should film it. Uh, first two weeks of January, 15% off anything on the site. And we have over 5,000, in fact, close to 6,000, well, after today, maybe close to 7,000 vintage tools, all individually listed and ready to ship around the world. So, yeah, if you wouldn't mind supporting me there, I would be most appreciative. Uh, thanks for watching. See you soon. Goodbye.